Good morning. My name is Marion Burgess and I'm the President of the Howick Districts Historical Society and I welcome you to the Howick Historical Village today. Right now we're sitting in the Ararimu School. Ararimu was, came to us uh, just on 40 years ago from the Ararimu site in South Auckland and was a school that was set up in 1876 but very different from a school that we have today. The boys and the girls were separated and very often the older girls in particular were used as teachers to help start the little ones because everybody spent their time in this one room. And if you look around this house, you'll see that the lower windows have all been covered in order to stop the children being distracted and looking outside. Just outside, some of us have got their cows and the cows were always walking past and that was much more interesting for the children than what they were supposed to be learning. So we, the windows have all been covered so the children can't be distracted. The main things that they learned were the three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic. It was very important for the children to be able to read, very important for them to be able to write their names and of course they needed to be able to do their sums. And often that was taught by rote. So the children would all sing A, B, C, D, whatever the teacher wanted. But before they got to that stage, the teacher would always inspect their hands in the morning. Put your hands up children, and she'd do a nail inspection, and then they'd have to put their hands on the table, and of course there was no talking. Part of the reason that she wanted to see their hands was to find out whether they were left-handed or right-handed because in those days children were not allowed to write with their left hand. They had to write with their right hand and often the teacher would tie the child's hand behind their back to stop them from writing with their left hand, which was a real problem because if you're naturally left-handed and trying to write with ink and inkwells, your work got very messy and there were lots of blocks and blocks were not allowed either. I'm sitting outside James and Mary Hansen's tent, which was located in Nihanga. When the Fencibles arrived into New Zealand, the buildings that they had hoped for, the homes that they had hoped for, were not ready. So obviously the families had to go and live somewhere and James and Mary Hansen had a tent in Onihanga. The families had been told before they left Ireland and Scotland that they would have a double unit cottage ready for them when they arrived and if they signed on for seven years they would be given that half of the cottage plus an acre of land. This was absolutely beyond all their expectations that they would ever own land in Ireland. They also had two children, so the four of them would sleep in here. The two children would share a bed, top and tail, and, and James and Mary Ann would be on the other side. This tent was also their bathroom, their kitchen, their living room, everything. And being a tent, it wasn't always waterproof so sometimes it would leak and Mary Ann would get very angry with James and say fix the roof, fix the leak on the roof or you won't get any more hot dinners. But when Mary Ann was cooking she would often sit outside at a fireplace where she could stir her soup or whatever she was cooking, she could peel her potatoes and prepare the vegetables and also watch the children who are perhaps gathering the eggs from under the chooks uh, chopping wood for the fire to keep it going. There were lots of things to keep her busy. This tent here was, uh, is only one room as you can see and people often say where was the toilet? It was not inside. James had to go around the back or somewhere away from the tent and dig a very deep hole and they would put a little shelter over that and they would use that as their toilet. It was called an outhouse. I'm talking to you now from the kitchen of our grand house in the historical village. This is called Puanui. It was built by the McLaughlin family and located in South Auckland on Puanui Road. Uh, when the family no longer had need of it, 
they gifted it to the Howick Historical Village. So the house, which is quite enormous as you can see, was cut into five pieces, loaded into a truck and brought over here and reassembled around the 1870s that the house was built and it was built for William McLaughlin who was a very very successful landowner, big farmer in the area and he loved horses so he set up the Pakaranga Hunt. So sitting here in the kitchen, it's quite a busy kitchen, so they had a, a coal range here and could cook much food. Uh, they roast meats, they cook bread, they had pots, uh, pots of soup boiling, cook, baked cookies, everything that we have that we eat today, they could make here on the coal range. You can see over here on the shelves behind me, there are jars of preserved fruit and that was an important activity in summertime when the fruit harvests came, the apples, the blackberries, the, the grapes, whatever fruit they had, they would boil it all up into jams and preserves, put it in bottles and store it so they would have a source of fruit throughout the winter when there was no other source of fruit around. Um, they had their own eggs and you'll see eggs and dishes around here so they were very, very self-sufficient. So this family was used, this kitchen was used for a lot of activity. You can just see somebody rolling out the bread, rolling out the dough here on the spread table. And we still use this today. We produce all those foods here today in this kitchen at the historical village.